Today we're going to talk about what are the best programming languages to get a job. My name is Alec. I run a web development agency. I know a lot of people who run agencies and I've been a web developer since 2018. I know what the market looks like and I know what people are looking for. I want to start by talking about a lot of popular programming languages and a lot of programming languages that a lot of YouTubers recommend that I don't think are really good recommendations. I think if you're starting out, uh, a lot of people would tell you to learn C Sharp. I know a lot of YouTubers recommend C Sharp. Honestly, I think if you don't have a degree, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to find a job with C Sharp. For me, it's important to make a video like this for people who don't have degrees because I think if you try to find videos on YouTube like this to try to learn uh, which programming languages you should learn, it's probably because you don't have a degree. I think if you've been to college for three years, you've probably learned quite a bunch of programming languages and you probably feel like you're ready to get a job. So I'm, I know that a lot of people watching this don't have a degree and if you don't have a degree and you probably don't have work experience if this is your first job, C Sharp, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get started. The reason I say that is because C Sharp is a language that's very used on the enterprise level. That means that you're probably going to be working on big projects for huge companies and working on back end stuff. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can create a lot of problems for the company that ends up costing them more than what you bring them in value. Oftentimes, they don't really want to give these jobs away to people who don't have degrees or uh, don't have work experience because you're just not reliable enough for them. It's too much of a risk to let you work on these projects. Oftentimes, it's easier for you to start your career when you don't have a degree on smaller projects, on projects mainly in front end, uh, in mobile development, in, mo in uh, web development, because these projects, uh, they're, typically you're just building stuff that is visible. You're not building, uh, you're not working in a database. There may be a small database that you do interact with and pro program stuff for the database, but it's not a big, big, big program where there's a lot of risk that if you fuck up, things go wrong because on these small projects, if you fuck it up, you can just, the company can just rebuild the database or the coding project from scratch. And because they're small projects, the worst thing that happens is they hire someone on Upwork to redo the, the things that you fucked up on. So they're typically going to be much more willing to give new developers a chance. A lot of people recommend to people starting out that they should learn Java. Uh, it can be good, but the problem with Java is that it's one of the, those languages that is taught in most college courses. And the problem is that if you're living pretty much anywhere in North America, there's probably a college near you or a bunch of colleges near you that teach Java. And what happens is that the graduates from these colleges tend to try to find jobs around the colleges and because they have degrees, they have a higher likelihood of being hired than someone who doesn't have a degree. So typically, you want to find languages that there's demand and there's not a lot of developers who are capable of filling that demand. And I think Java, yes, there's demand. But the problem with Java is that it's hard to compete with graduates because they're going to be all around you because Java is taught in so many colleges. What I'm typically looking for a lot of the times when I'm looking for people to hire is not just programming languages. I'm also looking for a lot of different tech skills, uh, technologies that are not technically programming languages. But if you learn things like Photoshop to be able to do some basic image editing or GIMP or many, there, there's many other tools that you can learn. Basically for me, knowing that the person I'm about, I'm about to hire is able to do basic image editing is, a, is, is very good because when you're doing some mobile development or web development, it's very common that you do need to, uh, to build the visuals of your website or your mobile app or you, your web app. And oftentimes uh, you include images in these designs. And I wanna 
have someone who's able to do some basic color correction, who's able to uh, crop the images, who's able to resize the images so that they're not too big and so that they load fast enough. And if you do know Photoshop and you do know some, at least one of these programs and you list that on your resume, for me, it's going to increase the chances that I give you a chance. Other than that, I'm often looking for people who are good with uh, domains, hosting, cPanel, FTP, SMTP, all the things that are related to uh, the hosting, the domains, being able to um, install the web applications, the websites on the server and be able to interact with the server using cPanel, be able to uh, transfer domains, all these sort of um, tasks that often come up when uh, working with different companies that need website updates or new websites or these sort of small projects that typically new developers uh, get to try their skills on. And more than that, if you want to get started with uh, web development, you should absolutely, absolutely know the basics of HTML, CSS. And I would say WordPress is probably uh, more important than any programming language you could learn when it comes to whether or not I would like to hire you or not. The reason for that is that you need to understand that the market when it comes to web development, most of the people who buy websites are small businesses and small businesses, they usually want to be able to make uh, changes on their websites themselves, right? Sometimes their uh, schedules change if they're a gym or something like that. Sometimes their pricing changes and they don't want to have to go talk to you every time. Sometimes they want to add articles. They want to be able to modify some small things themselves. And they like the idea that if they want to add a page, add some information, change some information, if things change, they don't have to go hire you and pay you hundreds of dollars for it. And oftentimes I don't, I can't tell you how many jobs that I've lost because I couldn't uh, do WordPress. When I started out as a developer, as a freelancer, I didn't do WordPress and I kept uh, having meetings with different businesses who were looking for developers who were looking for a new website. And I was there in these meetings for them and I was telling them how I could build a really good website and all the technologies I could use. And they were like, oh, but will we be able to modify the websites ourselves? And I was like, well, not really, but that doesn't really matter because I can help you with that. And sometimes it's better that uh, clients, well, basically I, I was doing my, my, I was doing the best sales pitch I could, but essentially uh, a lot of the times I would end up losing these projects to my competitors who had bad reputations, but they were able to deliver the types of, uh, of websites that the clients wanted, which is websites they can customize by themselves. And even today, like I would say uh, at least 50% of the projects that I work on are still WordPress projects. People want WordPress. And even when they don't specifically look for WordPress, oftentimes it's easier for a company to build their website on WordPress because it's faster uh, than building it with HTML, CSS, with all the plugins and tools on WordPress. I would say that I, 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 I would say that WordPress is probably the number one tool that you should learn if you want to be able to, to freelance, honestly. Uh, and if you want to work at an agency, it's definitely a, a big, big plus in your arsenal on your resume. The best programming languages that you could choose starting out, uh, I would recommend number one, JavaScript is a really good option. I don't recommend learning all the languages I'm about to share with you. I think the best thing you could do to start out your career is to just learn one. Learn one, get good enough at it, get ready to find your first jobs. And yeah, don't, don't waste your time in learning purgatory. Like so many d developers spend months, months, years uh, learning with YouTube tutorials, never feeling that they're ready to find jobs. And they, it's sort of a way of procrastinating. I feel like a lot of people who want to become developers don't have a lot of self-confidence. They're afraid to make a mistake. They're afraid they're not going to be good enough. So they spend way too much time learning and they end up when they try to find jobs, having so much more on their resume than they really need. Uh, I feel like it's a waste of their time and energy because they could have spent all that time having a job and making money instead of learning online for free because you're gonna learn and get experience anyway from working.
So just learn one of the programming languages I'm about to share with you. Uh, one of them, JavaScript. JavaScript last year, uh, when I checked, was the number one most in-demand programming language. Uh, JavaScript tends to pay, on average, uh, more money per year than uh, a lot of other programming languages. I think it's uh, on a, it was on average last year about $10,000 a year more than uh, Java, I believe, on, on Indeed.com. $10,000 a year, that's, that's big. Like, that's, that's two used cars, right? And JavaScript is really good because if you want to do some web development, if you want to do some front end, uh, there's a lot of uh, it allows you to make it allows you to make a lot of interactive stuff, do some DOM manipulation, which allows you to build uh, some web apps, which would be way harder to build or maybe impossible with other technologies. So if you really want to become a web developer, a front-end developer, and turn this into a career. Uh, JavaScript is really good, even for back-end. There's a lot of there's a lot of back-end tools that you can use that run on JavaScript. PHP can be amazing as well. I think if I find a developer who wants to work for me and he knows PHP, that's going to be one of the programming languages I'm going to be the most interested in because. Uh, like a lot of agencies, most of our projects are WordPress projects. WordPress runs on PHP, and the problem with WordPress is you can do a lot of with WordPress plugins, but you can't do everything that you want, and knowing PHP allows you to modify uh, the plug plugins, do some stuff with the website that you couldn't do if you didn't have PHP. So if I find a good, good, good PHP developer who's also well-versed in WordPress, HTML, CSS, he might be my emergency guy that I go to when I need to make a modification on the site that I don't know how to do with other uh, tools that, that we have at our disposal. And the last one is Python. Python, good option because there's a lot of demand, pays well, and it's really easy to learn. All right, It's one of those languages you can probably learn it faster than the other two that I just mentioned. And you can probably get your first jobs very fast. And it has a lot of different uh, future opportunities for different uh, paths that you could take your career in. One of the beautiful things about being a developer, regardless of which programming languages I just share with you, is that you can probably find remote work or be able to work from home as a, an employee or a freelancer uh, with any of the technologies I just shared with you. And if you're interested in working from home, and you want to know more about what are the opportunities to do it. I made a podcast a few weeks ago where I share with you the difference between remote work, freelancing, being a digital nomad. I talk about a lot of things with my friend Oliver, who is a digital nomad, went to Nicaragua uh, for a long time and found jobs uh, with a web development agency. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of lifestyle, I think there's a lot of things that you could learn from this video. Uh, it's it, it's a, it was a really fun podcast. I'm going to include a link in, in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want more content. With that said, I'll see you in a next video. Take care.